Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with maple walnut cranberry sauce. That's right, I've not been this excited about a cranberry sauce recipe in like, I don't know, exactly a year. And the reason for my possibly irrational exuberance is that this is the first time I've ever tried maple and walnut in my cranberry sauce. And you know what happened? It was awesome. So to get started, we're gonna need, of course, some fresh cranberries. I put your standard 12 ounce bag into a colander. We're gonna rinse those off. They look pretty clean, but you never know. There might be some bog attached. So we're gonna rinse those off. We're gonna let that drain a little bit. And we're gonna dump those into our saucepan. And I'm not gonna list water as an ingredient, but there was probably a couple tablespoons attached to those berries. So we're gonna pour those in. And then as usual, we're gonna start adding stuff. We're gonna add a cinnamon stick, a little bit of white sugar, and then what's going to come for most of the sweetness in this, some beautiful grade B, not A, grade B maple syrup. And by the way, if you check out the blog post, I'll explain why I use grade B, which you may find fascinating if you're having you know, a really slow day. We're also going to put in a good amount of freshly grated ginger root. And that's really important here, so don't skip it. After the ginger, I'm going to add a splash of port wine. And really, I think a splash of any red wine would work. But port really has a beautiful sweetness to it, so that's what I'm going to use. And then we're going to put in some orange in two forms, freshly squeezed juice and some zest. And you can grate this also, but I like using this zester so I kind of get those long pieces of zest. I think it looks pretty cool. So we're going to toss in some of that. We're going to give this a stir. And then last but not least, a tiny, tiny pinch of salt just to kind of balance everything out. Salt, of course, is the auto-tune of cooking. And then we'll give that a stir. We're going to put our heat on medium high and we're going to bring this up to a simmer. And as you know, if you've ever cooked a cranberry sauce before, the berries will pop. But usually not very violently. So I wouldn't classify this as dangerous. Unless you have your face like right over the saucepan. Which of course would beg the question, why is your face over the saucepan to begin with? So if you are, please back that face up to a safe distance. And you can actually hear them exploding under the surface. Sometimes on the surface. So yes, pop goes the berry because the berry goes pop. And after a few minutes, you won't hear any more popping. And all we're going to do here is cook this on about that high of a simmer. So basically a very lively simmer, bordering on a full boil, but not quite. And we're just going to cook that stirring for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to turn it off. And that really is all there is to it. And of course, as I remind people of every year, this is the perfect thing to volunteer to make and bring to your family Thanksgiving gathering when you only want to look like you made an effort. This is like the iTunes gift card of Thanksgiving side dishes. So it really is perfect if you don't feel like doing a whole bunch of work. So to recap, bring it to a simmer and cook it for about 10 minutes until all the berries have collapsed. And don't worry if it doesn't seem thick. This is going to significantly thicken as it cools. So all we're going to do at this point is remove that from the heat, let it cool down just a little bit while we prep our walnuts. And by prep, I mean toast in a small pan. So we're going to put about a cup of chopped walnuts in a dry pan. We're going to put that on medium heat. And we're just going to cook those, tossing or mixing occasionally, until they're basically golden brown. And your nose knows, when they smell like awesome roasted walnuts, they're done. And by the way, quick tip, if you are flipping them, you're going to see a little accumulation of these particles on the edge. See that? That's walnut skin. That's the most bitter part. Wipe that away, and your sauce will be nominally better. So whenever that builds up, just give it a wipe. And at this point, after about five minutes of toasting, mine looked and smelled perfect. So we're going to turn off the heat, and then really the final step... We're going to pour our warm nuts into those beautiful berries. We're going to give it a stir. And that maple walnut cranberry sauce is done. And yes, it doesn't look that attractive yet. But don't worry. Cranberry sauces do not look cool until they're cool. Which I think is kind of cool. So let it cool down to room temperature in the saucepan. And then transfer it into some kind of bowl. And you can see how that thickens up beautifully. It's going to get a beautiful shine, a beautiful gloss, a beautiful glimmer to it. And that color. Look at that color. So at this point, we're going to throw some plastic wrap on there, and we're going to refrigerate that until the big day. You can make this way ahead. It will last almost literally forever. And to the people asking me why I always push the plastic down to the food instead of just wrapping the top, because air is your enemy. With no air, there's no oxidation, so I like to push it down. That's just good science. And then, of course, when it is showtime, you're going to transfer this into some kind of attractive cranberry sauce-appropriate serving vessel. And man, was that delicious. Like I said earlier, this is the first time I've ever done a cranberry sauce, sweetened by maple and with the additional walnuts. I thought the maple syrup sweetened this perfectly. And not only do those roasted walnuts add an extra special flavor, but they really do make the texture so much more interesting than your average traditional cranberry sauce recipe. And then usually at this point, I would be spooning this over some turkey, but forget the turkey. This is like the greatest cheesecake topping of all time. It's also awesome on ice cream. So hopefully you have some leftovers. 
So anyway, there we go. Whether you're a hardcore foodie looking for something a little bit different this year, or as I said, you want to bring something nice to the family gathering with a minimum of time and effort invested, I hope you give this incredibly delicious maple walnut cranberry sauce a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.